Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where you'll hear outrageous stories where people think the world revolves around them and that they're better than you. They just are better than you. Guys, I hope you're having a great day today. And listen, today's episode is a good one. So grab a drink, grab a snack, grab your mom, grab your dog, grab your cat. I don't know. Just grab everything you can. And I hope you enjoy the stories and do hit that subscribe button for future tales. Let's dive in. Now, this happened a while back. I can't give the exact time frame, but I was relatively young, maybe 9 or 10 years old. My aunt's life wasn't the picture of stability back then, and her house had just burnt down recently. So being a good sister my mother was, she offered to let my aunt and two of her four kids stay at our dad's house for the summer. All my aunt had to do was to keep the place clean, take out the trash, feed our pets, and generally don't destroy the place. An additional rule that me and my sister set in place were that the boys, who were 5 and 6 years old at the time, weren't allowed in either of our rooms, as they would have no need to, as they were to sleep in another room. My aunt was to sleep in the spare bed that we had in our basement. She failed all of those requests multiple times. When we arrived back at the house, the place was a wreck. So let's go over all the things she did. She and her boyfriend got tired of the smoke detector going off whenever they smoked in the house so they started to leave the back door wide open so the smoke could flow out. That clearly did not work, as the whole house still smelled like smoke, and our house was invaded by flies, gnats, and other bugs. They stopped cleaning the cat litter and taking out the trash about halfway through the summer. Instead of feeding the animals at regular intervals, they just filled the food bowls with tons of food and let the animals eat as much as they wanted. The money we left them to buy more pet food, they spent on cheap kibble and used the leftover money to buy smokes and alcohol. Anytime they were required to put an address for something, they would put our address. We're still getting court summons and parking tickets for them to this day. But one thing that pissed me off the most at that time, as a 9 year old, is that whenever the kids got bored or she didn't want to deal with them, she just told them to go find something to play with. And a lot of the time, she opened the door to my bedroom. Of course they invaded my room and trashed the place and she did nothing to stop them. I came home to find my room completely completely covered in Lego pieces. They had dismantled all of my Lego sets, and I had dozens of Lego sets. Some pieces were lost, and honestly, I don't think they can ever be reassembled again. They even decided to use a wooden model airplane I built with my grandfather as a glider, slamming it into the ground and breaking off the landing gear and wings. And worst of all, two of my battery-powered Nerf guns were completely missing. We later found out that they had jammed them and broke them trying to fix it, and just threw it away. When we finally came back, we had to cover the cost of bug bombing the house to get rid of the flies, deep cleaning to get rid of the smoke smell, and replacing all the toys and other stuff that her kids broke. Of course, we did ask her for money to cover the cost, but she said since we're family, we're not getting a dime, and that since she house sat for us and watched our animals, that she'd be off the hook for it. We have since pretty much gotten no contact with her. Guys, I absolutely hate that. Oh, We're family, so uh, you should just let us do whatever the heck we want in your house. Guys, sometimes family can be the most entitled people ever. I've read enough stories that I can safely attest to that, guys. It does suck that the relationship had to go no contact, but honestly, would you want to be in contact with family that act like complete animals and have no respect for you or your property? So I'm a woman in my 30s living alone. My next door neighbor is also a woman in her 30s living alone. We live in a typical suburban neighborhood. Now, long story short, I noticed pretty early on that she's obsessed with her property lines, as I witnessed her yell at another neighbor about a month or so after she moved in. At that time, I thought to myself, okay, this woman is nuts, but she's not going to become my problem because I'll never go anywhere near the property line. Hell, I don't even spend time outside in my own backyard because I still have to build myself a patio. So I figured I'll just be friendly with her, and she'll see how chill and easygoing I am. And we will be cool with each other. Well, I was wrong. Now, come December, after our big first snowfall, I had hired a snow removal company to come remove the snow. The plow truck driver plowed my driveway, and this lady lost her lid. She flipped out, telling me that some of the snow that was moved during the plow drop from my property had rolled over to her property. Now, I asked her what she expected to come of this, and she basically demanded that I call the guy back to do her side as well. I told her, no, I'm not doing that, and I'm not paying for her side to be removed. Then she actually said, I'm going to draw the line in the snow. If anything goes over that line or the line disappears, we are going to have a problem. So after that, I tried to explain to her in a stern but polite manner that the snow was not on her side. 
Now she reacted to that by marching over to my property and screaming at me on my own front porch. She screamed in my face in a manner that I've never seen before. She demanded that I take a walk with her to examine the snow so she could prove that some of the snow from my side came onto her side. Now I was feeling pretty threatened at this point so I said, I'm not walking anywhere with you. She then screamed, then we are going to have a problem. Do you understand me? I said nothing because I was in such a state of complete shock. I just stared at her in amazement and then she leans in and screams, do you understand me? So I slammed the door in her face and decided to avoid her at all costs from then on. In the days that followed, she proceeded to shovel her driveway and her sidewalk in front of her house, screaming at me and my house the entire time she's shoveling. Come spring, the lady ran at us with a weed whacker as I walked in front of her house, screaming, You can't avoid me! You only go outside when you think I'm inside? Now I filed a police report after this incident. On her more calm days, she'll go outside whenever I go outside, and pretend to work on a bush that's on our property line. I had hired a landscaper to cut my grass because I don't feel comfortable in my own yard. She went outside on my landscaper's first day on the job and she talked to him about me. She then threatened him that if she sees him stepping foot onto her side, that she'll immediately call police and charge him with trespassing. Basically, I can't do anything at my house without her reacting to it or somehow finding a way to insert herself into the situation. She makes everything her business. On her best days, she's just behaving in a nosy, annoying manner, but on her worst days, she's screaming at me and making me feel threatened, as if I'm about to be physically attacked. Oh, and she never leaves her house to go anywhere, ever. She has her groceries and everything she needs delivered to her house. She literally never gets into her car to drive anywhere. She's always home, she's always waiting, watching to see if I go outside and get close to her property line. And before you say it, no, I'm not selling my house. I was here first and I put so much money into renovating it to make it my dream house. I refuse to be run out of my own neighborhood. Oh, and I'm getting a fence put up next month. Now, I don't really like the look of fences, but I don't think I'll be comfortable going into my own yard until I get one. Has anyone ever dealt with someone like this? Why is she doing this? And is she potentially dangerous? Opie definitely lives beside an entitled and crazy nightmare neighbor. Who the heck is that damn petty that they complain about snow coming onto their property? Guys, I'm absolutely speechless. I really am. This person's comment right here is right on point. They say, get cameras up before the fence. You have a survey, right? So if not, get it done now. Once those stakes are in and cameras are up, she's gonna explode. You wanna have cameras in place to protect the property line stakes and yourself. Then get your fence put in. Trust me, crazy is gonna make problems for the fence installer, guys. Have the survey in hand and the cops on speed dial. My friends, let me know what you guys think. Have you ever had any issues with entitled nightmare neighbors? So this happened a week ago, and I've just gotten over the shock in finishing giving my company statements. I work part-time in a chocolate shop, and we give out samples to customers. On this particular day, the sample contained a hazelnut spread. You can see where this is going. On this day, a mom and her kid walk into my store. The kid immediately runs up to my sample table and screams, Mom, can I have some? I said hi, can I offer you a chocolate? Just so you know, it does contain hazelnuts and milk. The entitled mother takes a chocolate, and she says, I'll have one, but my son is allergic to nuts. Is there anything else he can try? Now, even though it's not company policy, my store does keep an open box of plain dark chocolate to give people with allergies because we like to be nice. I told her, I do have to warn you that everything in the store may contain traces of nuts, but I do have some chocolate he could try with no nuts if you agree. She agrees and I get the chocolate out. So far, so good. She actually comes across as quite nice. So the boy grabs two chocolates and she picks up one as well. I internally roll my eyes, but I keep a smile on my face. The boy immediately spits it out and she starts to complain. She says, What is this? This is boring and flavorless and disgusting. I told her, Ma'am, this is plain dark chocolate. It's the safest for people to eat with allergies. So the mom then says, Well, I got a fancy chocolate and my son who loves chocolate got something with no flavor. It's like you're punishing him for having allergies. Give him something that tastes better or I won't buy anything from this company ever again. I spend a lot of money in this store, okay? And you don't want to upset me. Now at this point, he's screaming and jumping around at our wall of chocolate. And because he's young and can't read, he picks up a bar that contains nuts. He says, I want this. So then the mom demands that I let him try this. 
I told her, miss, I'm not allowed to open packets to let people try a chocolate. And also, she then cuts me off as I go to explain about the nuts. She then says, if you don't open it, then I will. She then rips the packet out of the boy's hands. He's been screaming the whole time, and this just makes it worse. I start to panic and say, Miss, that has nuts in it. What are you doing? She opens the packet, breaks off a large chunk of chocolate, and shoves it into the boy's mouth as he screams and cries. The moment he tastes it, he stops screaming and starts happily chomping on the chocolate, and she instantly appears to calm down. Her voice changes back to how she was when she came in, if a little more patronizing. She says, See, that wasn't so hard. I'll buy this because he likes it. Now, right at this very moment, I'm in panic mode. She just told me that he's allergic to nuts, and I don't know how serious his allergy is. I've never seen anaphylactic shock before, and I always thought it happened instantly, so when he didn't swell up right away, I assumed that she'd been lying to get a different chocolate. The woman then clips her son into his buggy, and then comes to the till to pay, and takes a moment rummaging in her bag to find her purse. Now, I realize the son has gone very quiet, and immediately look at the buggy, thinking he must have fallen asleep. The boy's face is very red, and beginning to swell. He looks super disoriented, and can't make proper sounds as his throat swells. I realize that this is the beginning of an allergic reaction. The mother then turns around and she screams. Now, thankfully I work in a shopping mall, so I hit the button that alerts emergency services to the store. In my panic, I start yelling and say, Do you have an EpiPen? The mom is clearly in shock and just starts making this high-pitched whimpering noise and nods while she points under the buggy. I stick my head out of the store and yell for responders. I'm pretty much in tears at this point. Thankfully, the mall responders arrive and take over. The mom is screaming in hysterics, shouting, I'm so sorry, baby. They're first aid trained and get the EpiPen. They also call an ambulance. They administer the medicine and have the kid laying flat until the ambulance arrives. The mom is crying and clutching my arm the whole time. Now, at this point, I nearly felt sorry for this woman until I can remember that this is all her fault. The ambulance arrives and takes both of them away. I called my manager, and she just let me close the store until my coworker arrived, and I started giving statements to everybody. My company, the mall, the police, and I got the rest of the day and the next day off. Thankfully, the boy recovered, so there is a happy ending. I'm actually surprised that the mom didn't threaten to sue OP and this store for letting her son eat something he's allergic to. I mean, it's kind of nice to know that she messed up 100% and took responsibility for it, but I feel like someone should be calling CPS due to this. Like, she knowingly fed her son something he's allergic to, to fuel her entitled ego. Like, it could have ended so much worse. Good job, mom. Two thumbs up. This story belongs to my beautiful wife, who is department manager in a major grocery store. It's from that time last year in 2020 when buying a roll of toilet paper might have required a bank loan. So on the day in question, the store had finally gotten some toilet paper in to stock the shelves with, but was limiting it to one package per customer. Since several members of her team were in early to help restock before they opened, they had all set aside a package each to purchase before they left for the day. So about mid-morning, a young lady was lucky enough to snag the last package on the shelf, putting it into her carts and continued shopping. A few minutes later, she was shopping near my wife's department, in the back of the store. She then turned to choose an item from several options on the shelf, and as soon as she did, a man walks by and grabs her cart and took off towards the front of the store. Now, my wife saw the young lady yell out, What are you doing? That's my cart! And the entitled man did not slow down a bit, but he just yelled back before turning the corner, Nope! I need it more! I've got three kids at home! And he was gone! The young lady was frozen in shock and disbelief. Now, my wife had seen this from her department, but knew they would never catch the guy. He would ditch the cart and self-check out the toilet paper and be gone before they could get there. So she calls her team together and they make a quick plan. One of them goes to find the cart with the rest of her stuff in it. They found it. Another retrieved a couple of packages of toilet paper they had reserved for themselves. My wife approaches the young lady and told her it was going to be okay. Now, because of the nature of my wife's department, she had a register there and can ring customers up. Before the lady realized what was happening, they had rung her up with two packages of toilet paper. The lady was in tears. After she paid, my wife told her, Now take these to your car and secure them before you continue shopping, okay? The young lady agreed and left rapidly. My beautiful wife's team shared the remaining packages, and at no time during the shortages did any of them run out of toilet paper. Listen, that guy was definitely an entitled idiot. I have three kids at home, so it's okay for me to steal from you. 
Like what if OP had 6 kids at home and really needed it? Great way to justify your actions sir. Now guys I don't work in retail but was there any way to like chase the guy down and deny him service at that point? Because that was such a crappy, crappy thing to do. No pun intended. <laughs> this happened to me when I was 18 years old. I had just bought my first car about a week earlier and was driving to my girlfriend's house. As I was driving along the neighborhood road, a ball flies onto the street and I see a boy darting onto the road. Now, I do as anybody would have done and slammed my brakes, stopping hard. Anyways, in my sudden stopping, I get rear-ended. It's nothing too serious. Both cars are drivable but just had bent bumpers. The woman in the car behind was in her late 50s and she came bolting out of the car, screaming that I could have killed her and her boy. Now, I want to note that she was alone in the car, so no idea where the kid came from. Being young and having only had my car for a week, I just went right to the formalities of exchanging info. The woman did not even entertain that idea and kept shouting how I'd better pay for her damages and the emotional distress caused. Otherwise, she'll call her lawyer husband, who will come and not only sue me, but he'll beat me up. I then point out that we need to exchange info, and since both of our cars are drivable, we can just leave and go to the police station to make the report. She then told me that police clearly aren't needed, as I stop suddenly and this accident is 100% my fault. Now, mentioning the police really set her off into a tantrum, and she goes into a tirade about my attempted murder of her and her son. Again, there's no kid there. I missed most of it because I was on the phone talking to the dispatcher. As soon as the police turned up, it instantly switched from ranting and raving to running up to the officers in floods of tears about this young guy driving like a maniac on the road, causing a poor mother to crash. The officer spoke to us both, ran our details, and wouldn't you believe it, she actually had insurance. Great! Now, the woman was acting really odd. She was slurring, she was walking off balance, so the officer asked her to perform a breathalyzer. Now, this is where it goes downhill. She of course denied taking the test, saying that the officer has no rights to ask her to do that, and she got arrested for failing to provide a sample, and in the process of the arrest, got a resisting arrest tacked on. So long story short, her insurance company paid for all of my damages, plus some medical, because I was damn sore a few days later. I was called to be a witness in court, and she got a one year driving ban, and a $500 fine, for the failure to provide a sample and resisting arrest. So in summary, rather than providing me with her name, address, and insurance so we can be on our way, she instead got banned from driving. She got arrested and had to pay a fine. So this story definitely surprised me. The way she was acting when refusing to give OP her details really led me to believe that she didn't have any registered paperwork at all, guys. I'm so, so surprised that she had insurance. I'm pretty sure she just tried to intimidate OP by screaming that her husband's a lawyer, etc. to try to pin fault on OP and have him pay her damages on the spot, but this definitely backfired. And I'm pretty sure she just ran with it. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash Entitled People. If you enjoyed the stories today, do give it a thumbs up, and if you missed the last episode of our slash Entitled People, OP's girlfriend moves in and throws out his classic car. She threw it out so she can park her new car in his garage. It's absolutely insane. Check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.